In this lecture, I want to show you how you can actually give explicit names to each of your grid lines in order to then use those to arrange your items on the grid. Now, this can be used to make your code more readable, but it can also make your code quite a bit lengthy if your names are too long. So you're going to have to decide for yourself uh, if you find these useful or not. In the coming lectures, when we talk about more advanced concepts, you're going to see that in some cases they can also be more useful than maybe in this example. But for now, let's only take a look at how you can actually use those. So when we define our rows here, for example, then again, which is very new in CSS, you can use square brackets here to then inside here define the name of the first row or rather the first line. So this is now the name for this grid line on top here, the first horizontal line. And then between these two, you can define the name for the grid line between these two rows. So for example, I could say row one end and you can give multiple names. So for example, I may also want to use row two start for this. And then at the end here, of course, you can go ahead and give a name to this last row grid line here. And I'm going to say row to end for this one. Now, similarly, you could do the same thing for columns here, like call one start and so on. But I'm not going to do this right now in order to keep the code a bit more concise for you to be able to follow along the main concepts. So now whenever I'm using, let's say, grid row start two here, I could now also use either row one end or row two start in order to do the same thing. So now item two is still going to be here and I can also try row one start just to make a change to this. And now you can see that item two is now on top here. But let's go back to our previous layout in this case. So that's now just basically an alias for the number two in this case. And row end here is actually set to four for which we don't have a name because that's outside of the actual grid that we have defined. Now grid column start, I didn't give any names to those, but down here you could now replace grid row one, two. So to place the fifth item here in the first row, you could say you want this to span from row one start all the way to row one end. Now this makes it a bit clearer that this is just going to be row one, but it also makes your code quite a bit more lengthy. So you're going to have to weigh the benefits and the drawbacks of this. And as I said, later on, we're going to see how you can use naming like this in a more useful way. Now, of course, if you're sketching a whole website layout, then, well, for the columns, at least this might be something like sidebar, then you could say content start. Maybe here this would be content end, and also sidebar to start, which would be a sidebar on the right. So that's one way to use them to identify the major parts of your website via the name of your grid lines. But still I find this to be quite lengthy and not very concise. But we're going to see later on a kind of a different way to handle this without having to put them all into the grid template here by using grid areas. So that's one thing that's very useful. And we're going to, of course, look at that in the coming lecture. All right, but now that's all about naming your grid lines if you want to. So now let's move on to the next lecture.